Taking the loops, knocking boots, my body rocking. Yeah. Never the two, I'm the one, so nigga, stop it. Yeah, karma finna pay me stacks. I know your new trick, watch it, so relay this back. Finna have it, don't lock like a choke I don't got no time for a bro call.
short of the perfect. Steady dripping full, see I'm keeping the tone wet. But buzzing with the honey, sitting king with a throne yet. I only think a body why the nigga ain't home yet. He fucked up, so I let him fuck nigga go. Eat it your pig when I'm still doing bigger dough. Played you the ball to score, but you dropped it. Wasn't in his plan, so of course my guy blocked it. I'm about to have him stop it. Taking the loops, knocking boots, my body rocking. Yeah. Never the two, I'm the one, so nigga, stop it. Yeah, karma finna pay me stacks. I know your new trick, watch it, so relay this back. Finna have it, don't lock like a choke code. I don't got no time for a bro code. Let me go, but I'm letting to go. Let me go, but I'm letting to go. Let me go, but I'm letting to Charge here, Oliver Twix, letting you know that my song Hydraulics drops everywhere next week, Friday, January the 19th. Scan the code to pre save now. Come on, y'all, help me get this bitch on iTunes. <laughs> Let's get it in, right? Come on, come on, How y'all doing? The people came out to church tonight. Oh my goodness. Listen, I'm sitting in the background trying to get ready. Um, can you guys hear me first of all? What's going on, y'all? It's Oliver Twix here, your nerd boy cutie, reporting for duty to do the Lord's work once again. And baby, we're here for a treacherous Thursday, okay? <laughs> the shit is hitting the fan and it's all over the fucking walls. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> Why are there 600 people in here? <laughs> so I'm sitting in the back. You know, I'm trying to... Um, I was honestly trying to airdrop a video that I don't think is on the internet that I did get permission to play because I was told um, to record it. Um, and I just wanted to make sure you guys get this. Um, but I just saw the numbers keep going up. I said, oh my God, what's going on here? Um, but it's okay. Y'all have made me nervous, but it's a-okay. I think this is the biggest live I've ever had. Um, but honestly, with the prayers I'm having, we pray to have more, larger, bigger, and better. Listen, today has been a day. Okay, so we are here to talk about what we have inadvertently started. <laughs> Buffy the married to Mary, Bear, Buffy the married to medicine slayer got the streets crunk. And my silly dumb ass is sitting right next to the rock. 
caught up in it. Caught up in it, okay? Yes, we're talking about um, the fallout from the Buffy interview we did earlier this week. Yesterday, child, just came out yesterday, um, as well as some of the things that have happened as a result of that live, that being Dr. Contesta Metcalf having a few choice words for Buffy, as well as Dr. Jackie blocking me on Instagram. <laughs> Yo, and for the people who are not new here, when I do these lives and things are going on, I have notes. We have notes so I can make sure I speak concisely and I get to the point and I don't miss anything out because there's some things I really do have to talk about. You know, we're going to talk about why did I do the interview? We're going to talk about If I'm friends with some of these people, oh, my friends with Dr. Jackie, oh, and my friends with Dr. Heavenly, oh, we're going to talk about all this. We're going to talk about all these things today because you guys have a lot of questions. And you know what? No matter how hard it may be, because this is kind of unnecessarily difficult, I know it's going to be all this. Listen, we're going to press through, all right? Head up, chest out, bitch. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's first talk about. Um, I guess the most convenient thing, which is Dr. Contessa entering the chat. Bitch. Dr. Contessa said, hey, what's up? So I'm going to play you guys the clip that subsequently got posted on Instagram. Sorry. My friend said, put the mic down. What's going on? Did it get too loud? Let me turn myself down some. Is it too loud? Can you guys hear me? Darius, is that better? Someone please call 911. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the mic good, my people out there? 763 of you. Okay, it's good. All right, Um, where was I? I do want to say, you know, <laughs> and I ain't going to say it right now. Um, I'm going to play a clip that subsequently got posted after all this fiasco because it had already got crunk earlier this morning. Um, you know, shout out to everybody who watched the interview that I did with Buffy. Um, within 24 hours, we already had 30,000 views. Thank you guys so much. Um, I appreciate the viewers. I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate everything. It's greatly appreciated. Whatever side you stand on, I greatly appreciate you patronizing my channel um, and watching my monetized content. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, but I'm going to play you guys the clip that has the soundbite that kicked off this whole entire thing. So here we go. Hmm. Let me see. Hold on. Uh oh. I thought I was going to play it. One second. Oh, I know where it is. I'm sorry, y'all. Here we go. Playing now. Listen, this is a safe space. We're, we're trying to under, understand how you understand. I've heard the main complaint with Mariah was always her demeanor of she was in charge, the women needed to bow to her. Did you see her have those type of moments with other people, whether they be a cast member or a member of production? No, what I saw was somebody that was abused when I was on the season. I remember we were in Savannah at the cast trip and she had gotten stung by a bee. And I remember her lip, her face, her lip was swelling up and Simone and Jackie just sat there and kept doing their notes. And I was like, do the damn hell. They got to go get your Benadryl or the daughter's going to do something. And I went and got, they didn't even move. So I, I don't know what the dark sordid past was, but they all messy. Really, it was Simone. It was not Mariah. It was Simone saying, you need to get in Jackie's ass. Da, 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 da. Simone called me when she was doing a green screen one day and she was all in a panic. So I'm like, they're going to blame this on me. And I was like, what are you talking about? I might have told Jackie about your fertility issues on the way to your fab and frugal party. What's wrong with Toya being able to spend money and shop? I don't understand why people give her so much grief about living a soft life. Black people should be allowed to. What's wrong with that? <laughs> they want to say she's a gold digger. Are, they, are their husbands gold diggers? Because they paying bills over there too. Who are you talking about? The doctors and, and the dentists. <laughs> Still to this day, can't believe what she did and got <laughs> But you know, are you talking about when she defended when she was defending Dr. Jackie at the table? 
Yeah, there's stuff y'all didn't see. <laughs> like what? Like she said, Jackie didn't lie. Your uterus don't work, do it. And that was when, yeah, like just, just, just evil shit. I lost it. I couldn't believe she grabbed my neck and was screaming at me. And she said something really horrible to me. She, you know, was like, get down on the floor and let me rock you like the babies you'll never have. Like y'all didn't, they cut all that out. Like these women really went for the, you Contessa know. Contessa said that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Allegedly. Not allegedly. She said it. There's no, I'm not saying alleged shit. This shit happened. I dare a bitch to sue me. I will tear everybody ass up. I didn't start <laughs> I could own Bravo. A bitch could own Bravo right now. No, we can talk about it. Jackie, child, you know who I'm talking about? The person everybody always talking about why I keep talking about her. Jackie, the devil, honey. One of my favorite, and this is just one of my favorite quotes, just to say when I want to embody how over something I am. Buffy, I receive it. Done with it. You know she stole that line from me. Buffy, what you talking about? Yeah, it's cool. That, and that so that makes it even worse. It was like, yo, read, bitch. Read, you call shit against me. Yes, read. Did you not feel like her apologies were sincere? Did you just not want to take it? The apology at the reunion. Apology. I apologized at the reunion. A lawyer statement and gave an Academy Award winning uh, performance. Yep, she did. And I said I accept it. Yep. And, and I you said you accepted that. it. I and did. even what you're saying, you accepted it. It's still up in motherfucking stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't like her. Well, there you have it, you know. <laughs> that is just a truncated version of the two-hour conversation that I had with Buffy. But that clip just so happened to contain the part that sparked Contessa off. Before we get Contessa into this whole situation, I want to explain to a lot of people who may be confused about what is Oliver doing interviewing Buffy and talking about Mary to Medicine, right? So strap in for a little story time. It's going to be real quick, but it is necessary information to this conversation, right? So, um, and you know what? Where's my phone? I'm going to actually read it here because I actually responded back to someone's comment on YouTube who asked the question. Um, and so I'm just going to reread it because I kind of like summed it up and I don't want to be stuttering and trying to figure it out. Okay, so here it goes. I came onto the Atlanta scene under Funky Down Eva back in 2016 interviewing reality stars, Dr. Heavenly being one of them. Those videos are still up on his channel. Shout out to the people who've been following me since I've been, um, since when I was with Funky Dineva back in the day, writing on his website and stuff like that. Uh, shout out to y'all. Okay, beginning as early as 2016, people such as T.S. Madison and eventually Dr. Heavenly in 2020 began to contact me to help them with their social media because of what I was able to create for myself and do for other people, i.e. Funky Dineva. I got popular within the Black real reality world during quarantine as the content creator to the stars. But in other circles, I was going viral in 2022 up until, up until 2023 with my interviews with America's Next Top Models that literally landed me on Hulu and ABC, plus a FaceTime call from Tyra Banks herself. I can also say that I have some of the highest viewed interviews for Jocelyn's Cabaret on YouTube. In 2023, I literally sat across from Candy Burris for a year, almost on her podcast, talking about topics, including reality TV, and even did an episode to speak on it. Um, in 2024, I'm getting back to my interviews on reality TV, and I decided to add a show that I've been a fan of for years to my catalog, Mary Medicine. Um, we've seen countless people in this space of commentary have to talk about things that are close to home and are familiar, which is fine. It's all about how you navigate it. And I like, and like I did with all of my other shows, sorry, that was my Bluetooth speaker turning off. And like I did with all my other shows, I'm going to do it with comedic compassion in hopes of helping folks to understand and be understood, right? So the twin exclusives that I do are one-on-one -on -one chats. I started back in quarantine um, with reality, reality TV people about the show, right? Um, I come from the perspective of a fan to talk about the show, what's going on. And if the person is of some type of celebrity status or they've had some type of big moment, we also talk about that too. The whole point of that is the whole point of what I do on my channel with reality TV is to give people a chance to explain. You know, she is a D-list reality TV personality, okay? We've been on the YouTube for years with a chase in Atlanta. 
We was on Madison thing. We was on the 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 um the Netflix thing. We did Brat and Judy. So I, I understand the other side of reality TV. And I've also been around people who've been in reality TV. And they oftentimes do get misunderstood. I get misunderstood. And from someone like me who prides themselves in being able to separate what I feel and what I know, um, to separate that and still be able to show up and listen to someone and ask questions in a fun fair way that allows them to tell their story is my mission on my channel. And that's what I love doing. Um, and as we enter into 2024, all of my projects um, honestly have come to an end and nothing bad has happened. Um, I'm just, I just have more free time to focus on how I originally got started, which was talking about reality TV. And honestly, in trying to be a smart content creator, which is something that I preach to everybody who, who does content, um, it was easier for me to get back into it. And actually, let me back up. Um, let me back up a little bit. Um, when I was doing Candy's podcast, my friend Darius is in the chat. Um, and he was with me the night that we went to a restaurant here in Atlanta. And we walked in and saw the entire team from the AMP platform, which was the podcast platform um, um, formerly operated by Amazon that Candy Coded um, Live was on. Candy Coded uh, Podcast was on. And other shows like Nicki Minaj and stuff like that, right? The lady literally came up to me and was like, hey, Oliver, we like we know about you. We've seen you on The Circle. We've seen you with Candy. We see, you know, the clips on social media. Some of y'all have seen my clips with the Candy Coda Live podcast down to the TikTok. If you don't know about it, go ahead and over there and get into it. We got it crunk down to it with, with, with Candy, okay? With the, you know. <laughs> Fun times. Get into it. Um, and they also knew about my work with America's Next Top Model, literally inspiring a whole special on Hulu and ABC Impact Nightline, 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 Nightline. Sorry if I'm getting that incorrect. And they were like, do you think you can recreate this on AMP? Um, full disclosure was in talks with the AMP people to start my own podcast, kind of interviewing people. The platform went bankrupt, whatever, they fucking closed. And so I sat with my friends who I originally brought in with me to pitch the idea or bring the idea to life. And I was like, you know what? I think we should like continue to do it. So we go live every Monday and we talk about reality TV and social media topics. Um, we ended up interviewing Johnny as a way to talk about Married to Medicine that week. I put the clip out on my YouTube channel on social media. The clip did well. So I was like, ooh, okay. Well, maybe I can take a look at interviewing people from Married to Medicine while it's still on so I can gain easy traction. Um, it's a show that I know inside and out as a viewer, as well as being around the people. And it'll be fun, right? I'll give it the same treatment. I did America's Next Top Model. I did Jackson's Cabaret. Johnson's Cabaret. We'll ask questions, get into it, have fun, right? So that's how Married to Medicine and me interviewing Buffy even came about. Um, in me doing a deep dive with Married to Medicine, I do want to talk to all the former castmates and just get into their head and have them talk about their time on the show. I just did an interview before Buffy with Audra. If you have not watched that, please go watch it. Um, Audra, who was a friend of the show on season nine, and we did a great, great, almost two-hour interview talking about her time on the show, some of the behind-the-scenes moments, some secrets, some edited-out moments, why she got demoted. We go into the full gambit, right? Um, and then hits. Now we're at Buffy herself for season seven. Um, okay. We've explained it to exclusive. We've talked about why we started talking about Married to Medicine. Um, how it came back from In the Mix with Twix. Monday show where we interviewed Johnny. Perfect. Why I chose Buffy. Okay, so um, my approach like I have with America's Next Top Model that I'm bringing into talking about Married to Medicine, which I actually have to all my approaches with these shows. I don't know these fucking people, okay? I don't know these people. I was not there. I did not see it. I did not feel it. I did not hear it. I did not touch it. I am watching an edited show for consumption and to be entertained. I think it is highly unfair, and I'll just be very honest, slightly crazy. I'm just going to say crazy to be an adult at home. And I ain't judging nobody, but I may be judging somebody. 
to really sit at home and really care about what the fuck these people got going on on TV. You know, shit, this shit is fucking TV. Turn it off and then turn turn it off and turn it off. You know, I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know what got said before this. I don't know what got said after this. I don't know if this is real. I don't know if this is fake. I don't know. So I can't judge someone based off of how they've been presented on a show or how someone else views them, you know? Cause I'm definitely not that type of girl. Just because you don't like somebody, uh, you know? Because people surely don't treat you that way, especially if it's someone that's of benefit. They surely gonna be friends with them. You know, pull it back all the way, don't get too carried away. All right, bitch, I got you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not that type of person where I'm a bandwagon or I don't give people a chance. I'm very um, passionate about having your own experiences that develop your own opinions about own people so you can have your own relationship. And so I'm talking about, honestly, in like a reality TV, why not interview the lady? She was there, you know? And that would be honestly biased if I said I would not interview her because she honestly hasn't done anything to me just because she's not friends or friendly with people that I associate with. That would be biased of me to say, well, I'm doing a deep dive of Married to Medicine, as I've said profusely, if you watch my videos, but I don't want to interview Buffy. That's completely biased. And I try my best not to be biased, especially in areas that I can't control. So, you know, Buffy, she was on the show. She knows Shanna Balenciaga, who was on, um, who was on Legendary, who I'm really cool with. But everybody who watched Chasing Atlanta, we shot a scene this season talking about me coming to the house of Balenciaga. Shannon has always been sweet to me. And Shannon and Buffy are friends. I was like, oh my God, can you look it up? Because, you know, this is what I'm doing. Okay, cool. Bam, Buffy is here. All right. Okay, let's talk about... Oh, let me stop. Okay, before I get too far off. That's why Buffy came. Okay. So let's talk about Buffy and Contessa. So we saw that clip. I'm going to play a clip that some of us saw this morning. Um, I was told to record this. And because we are the place that authored the original statement that has launched a thousand ships, we are going to be fair um, and make sure we submit all things into canon. So this is a live that happened this morning where Contessa was responding to the claims of Miss Br- Miss Buffy Purcell. Um, and here it is for you guys to watch. It's a lengthy watch, but a watch nonetheless. Here we go. To get out of the shit. This box. I lost my first. I was in labor. The baby, I was almost six months pregnant. It was too early. And so, of course, the baby only lived for a couple of minutes. Okay? I told her that for this woman, this fucking clout chaser to try to ruin my medical reputation. I am literally known as one of the most empathetic doctors. And I'm just going to be very, very clear. I was nothing but kind to her and for her to, in my opinion, last episode, when anybody is seeing how the season goes, trying to make it to the season two, right? You just played it up for the cameras. I was like, sis, let me, because I understand, but let's just fix your face because there is a camera here. I never pulled her into my lap and said, let me cuddle. Whatever the dumb shit is that she said, it literally makes no grammatical sense. And it makes no literal sense. It is literally something that, I'm just going to be honest with you, probably don't give a shit about none of us. You think they would have played that if I said that? So stop using other people's reputation to try to get a little attention okay you say you're rich you say you're doing fine i came after the fact and i said i apologize to you for your perception because if you thought that i was anything but empathetic to you i sincerely apologize to you i told you that i said i want to hug your neck and i told her from my heart an empathetic story about my experience as a woman who lost several children in one I actually have to fucking bury. So you lying ass bitch. You know where to find me, Chastain Integrative Medicine, and you said, should I sue you based on that dumb shit? Because again, I didn't say it. And if I did say that, everyone would have been like, gasp. Oh my God, who would say some such a thing? 
You would have heard it before and they would have played it. So I am going to come back to who I am. I'm quite sure my husband is going to be furious that I even responded. But when it comes to, I have I finished medical school in 1998. I am a 100% service connected Navy veteran. I'm a physician. I'm a mother of three live children. But my first child also matters. And I shared that very personal story with you. And for you to take that again, move on with your life, sis. Ain't nobody out here trying to take over. Your life ain't trying to ruin you. And if you didn't get what you needed from Mary to Medicine, that has nothing to do with anyone who has ever been a part of that cast. Take that up with NBC Universal and Bravo. But don't be out here trying to destroy the rest of us because you didn't get what you needed from whatever you were doing that season. Share your real life, be whoever the fuck you really are. And literally, if it's interesting, it is. If it's not, it's not. And if you have now decided that this is what I should have been and this is what I should have shown, then oh, sorry. But I did not say that. And y'all, I don't care all this other stuff that has come about. I ain't never responded about the stuff about my husband or anything. But for you to literally lie on my goddamn dead child. Trash. I thought we were cool. I don't have shit to do with you, Buffy, for, for whatever your name is. I don't have nothing to do with you. Nothing at all. But what you're not going to do, you're not going to be out here lying and saying, I said something about the dead children you'll never... What are you even saying right now? You sound crazy. But you have to be careful when you don't have all this on your chest. It fucking matters for the rest of us. Y'all can do whatever y'all want to. But this right here that we spent our whole entire existence to get to, that bullshit right there. Again, I'm not on reality television right now. I don't know if you're trying to get back on. I know they're casting. Good motherfucking luck. But if all that you need to do to get a little popularity and get some clicks and stuff is to embellish the shit that really happened, because again, even during the season, I can honestly say to you, we never, ever had a problem. So for what? So why would I come in at the end and say some ridiculous nonsense like that? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. You're absolutely right. You were in a very, very fragile place. And that story, and even me saying, I've been where you are, maybe made it about me. It made it about me for you. And that was Im impossibly insensitive. And I apologized to you for that. I was trying to connect with you. So you wouldn't be in that basement for another two hours. But I did not say that. And you will not lie on me. And yes, my little brother's name is Drill Gray the second. He is an attorney. And if you want to take this to court, we can. But you're going to stop lying on Contessa. Gray, my maiden name, Metcalf. Listen, this is a safe space. We're, we're trying to un understand how you understand. I've heard the main complaint with Mariah was always her demeanor of she was in charge, the women needed to bow to her. Did you see her have those type of moments with other people, whether it be a cast member or a member of production? No, what I saw was somebody that was abused when I was on the season. I remember we were in Savannah at the cast trip and she had gotten stung by a bee. And I remember her lip, her face, her lip was swelling up and Simone and Jackie just sat there and kept doing their notes. And I was like, do the damn him. See, they gotta go get us a Benadryl or the daughter's gonna do something. And I went and got, they need to move. So I, I don't know what the dark sordid past was, but. I'm so sorry, guys. I played the wrong clip. I just got it in. Um, So that was a live that Dr. Contessa did this early this morning before any, that clip that I actually just played was posted on social media. Um, she had already saw it and gave us that reaction. Now, the one that is taken over the internet that I'm not that I'm now going to play um, as Contessa talking about the lawsuit. Let's get into it. 
these women really went for the contestant you know, said that mm -hmm, yeah allegedly not allegedly she said it there's no i'm not saying alleged shit this shit happened i dare a bitch to see me i will tear everybody ass up i didn't say <laughs> I can own Hi, Contessa here. She did not say that. She is a pathological liar and she asked for the lawsuit, so let's give her one. Fortunately, there were about 10 people in that room and all of them, yeah, all of them are gonna be called as witnesses in this defamation lawsuit. You don't get to say anything you want, especially when it comes to there was absolutely footage. So challenge accepted. Let's see how rich you really are. Now, when I decided to do my Twitch exclusives, I did not put in the trajectory of the content for a bitch to get sued, okay? That was not in the cards at all. And every time I look at the clip, I'm just looking at my silly ass, being as earnest, honest, and trying to be present in the moment, trying to handle everything that's going on with my nervous laughter just there, just giggling. And I'm just, I'm looking just silly ass. It's in all the clips on X. Here's my opinion on what is going on. I want truth to prevail. As you saw in that clip of me talking to Buffy, I was immediately taken back off of those comments that she said. Contestant said to her, while filming, I know Contestant personally for years, um, and she is what I know to be a very sweet lady. Huh? That's how I know her. That is my experience. However, again, going back to what I said earlier, it is unfair to the entire situation for me to be a person who was not there to say, Oh, she got to be lying. Do I have my own secret thoughts? Yes. But in the public space, I'm just not going to put it out there because one, what does it honestly help? It doesn't really help anything. And honestly, for me, something I stand by, I just don't think that is fair to the situation, especially one of this nature. You know what I'm saying? Like, hoes going to have to open up their pocketbook. I don't want nobody to come and look at my pocketbook because my pocketbook can't play with y'all. My pocketbook can't do shit with none of this. What the heck? You know, I'm so glad. Listen, allegedly, I tried to throw a lifeline out there. She said, no, fuck it. Bucky said, fuck it. No, she said it. And so, who am I to tell this woman that I'm trying to interview and not be biased towards? Because I already know that's what people are saying. Because they know I'm, they see me with Dr. Jack and they see me with Dr. Heavenly. Then to then now, fight her on this. No, she's a grown, I don't know how old this Buffy is, but she's a grown, accomplished, wealthy woman of an accomplished age. This what she's saying? This what she's standing in? I don't, I don't got no responsibility in it. I didn't know she was going to say it. I didn't tell her to say it. I tried to help her from, you know, I tried to help, not necessarily help her, but just, you know, just help the situation. She said, no, fuck it. So, okay, mama, you take full responsibility. That's on you. Um, However, and I guess this is me giving my opinion, looking at Contessa in that first video, Mama was distraught. She was emotionally bothered by the situation. I think we can say arguably, visibly showing someone who is hurt by someone lying on them. I don't know. As we've heard on Mary Loretta say, I don't got no heaven, hell, or jail cell to put nobody in. Let the truth prevail. Because honestly, it's honestly an open and shut case. They save all of those videos and not videos. They save all that footage and audio in a big archive for times they may have to refer back. We saw it on Housewives last season with the whole Candy and Marlo situation. They showed a whole scene that never got shown. We didn't even know got shown. And it was edited, packaged with green screens and stuff like that. So they save all this footage. If the people really put on their shoes and slide up there in their Uber Blacks down to the courthouse and really file the paperwork and subpoena and all this other stuff and they spend the time doing all that, I'm pretty sure eventually 
with time and energy, they're going to see the footage and it's going to be shown whether Contessa said it or not. And truth will prevail. It's very unfortunate, honestly, that this has happened. I don't like that it's happening. You know, I don't like to see Contessa upset and emotional. Um, but then it's also uncomfortable for someone that I invited on my platform to now be called a liar. It puts me in a weird place, you know? And so the safest place, the safest place in the whole wide world is always in the will of God. But in this situation, the safest place is just for me to, you know, rightfully so back up. I didn't say it. It don't involve me. I was not there. Shit. <laughs> Shit. Shit. Okay? Shit. Um, going back to my notes, let me make sure I'm getting everything. Okay, so I want to talk about before we get into the next part. Please drop the Jackie Block B on Instagram. And I'm so glad that I don't have no vagina and I was a patient down to the practice because how I'm not how I'm supposed to get my annual checkup, <laughs> you know, at the top of the year. If I had a coochie, I'd be fucked up. <laughs> and Dr. Jackie was my doctor right now. <laughs> You better go down to some more office, Miss Oliver, and get that thing checked out because you won't be getting the check here. Yeah, Not that joke, Jackie Walters and Associates. You won't be. You won't be. <laughs> Yo, okay, so I want to talk about biases, right? Listen, so one of the biggest things people were talking about in the chats, um, especially those. Um, who are new to my channel and new to me interviewing reality TV personalities and stars um, is that even though I may have biases, I honestly try my very best to suspend them so that the guest's story can be told. That is always my goal, honestly. Um, do I always succeed? To some, maybe not. I'll tell you with Buffy from this interview, she texted me um, this morning. And she said verbatim, and I did post it on my Instagram, not my Instagram, but my YouTube community for people to see, but I got this from Buffy this morning. That said, and I quote, I saw the interview and loved it. Thanks for the professionalism and care and concern. Um, I try my best. I'm not perfect. Um, One of my taglines for my interviews is that I'm not an interviewer. I'm just a nosy bitch who's not afraid to ask the right questions. Um... And I'm honestly not trying to hurt nobody. Like, that's honestly not in my heart. That's out of my soul because I don't want to answer to an angry God for doing things with malintention or things that I know in my brain and heart that's going to hurt somebody. I did not think for one second that me interviewing Buffy would result in all of this. I did not think that. I did not think that. I was actually so grateful. We were kind of a month out from all of that stuff that was going on because we were honestly originally supposed to talk a while ago, but I was like, you know what? I'm glad that it got pushed back because, you know, that gives that shit time to breathe and we can create a whole new thing, right? Well, we done created a whole new thing, all right. And we, in the thick of it, <laughs> um, um, biases, right? Okay, so I really enjoy talking to people who have different perspectives, um, who have different mindsets, who have different opinions. For me, I think it is a very boring interview. While it may be fun for some, and maybe many, to see you know people slap fives and kiki, and, ah, that's fun, that's cute. But for me, someone who strives to be an intellect and activate my mind to think in all things throughout my day, I have more fun talking to people who are in complete disagreement with me, or who has, or who has a viewpoint that I do not understand, who has an opinion or um, a voice that is polarizing because it's fun for me to comb it out. I enjoy it. I really do enjoy it. I really do enjoy combing out stories and looking at the rationale and the thought processes of people that I necessarily do not agree with. And for me, Buffy, as I told her, was perfect because, and I didn't want to say it in that interview because that was not the place for me to give my own opinions. Um, like I said in that interview, like I've never been a black woman. I've never given birth. I don't want to be, I respect it. And I respect it enough to not give my opinion because it is a topic that talks about people 
that I'll never be. I'll never be a woman. And I don't I don't feel like me as a black man, as a gay man, as a gay black man, whatever. It's not fair for me to give my opinion on that. I'll never be one of them. I'll never go through those experiences. And I'm not the one that can um, that, you know, I'm not the doctors. I'm not. So I think it's best to, to for me to leave myself out of it. Um, the opinion that I will give and that I told Buffy in the interview when I said Buffy going to hell is I didn't necessarily agree with how she was doing it, you know, and that disagreement is that like out of a hundred percent, that's at like 2% because it don't involve me and I got my own shit going on. Okay. I'm working on my fucking taxes. Y'all listen to all my content creators out there, pay your taxes, get an accountant, tally this shit up. Okay. Because you don't want to be caught up trying to work out two years, three years. You just don't want to, but it's okay. We're going to work through it. You know, I'm, I'm a student at Dr. Hamlin University, so I know how to work through these situations. <laughs> Go back to the story. Um, it's fun for me to talk to people like Buffy. And I think it's fun for the viewer to see two people that have different perspectives or my line of questioning is one that aligns itself different from the person talking. Only for me, the intention is to pull more story out. I think that's fun to watch. And I think that's interesting to watch versus two people who ride in the same, the same boat of opinion, same train of thought. And just, ah, like, that's not fun to me. Um, and I honestly don't think there's anything wrong with that because not to toot my own horn, but I've navigated it pretty well for at least over 150 chats. You know, do I always get it right? No, but I do feel like my intention always meets the execution. Um... Yeah. <sighs> so I also want to say, um, like I said earlier, I don't know Buffy personally. I wasn't there for season seven. Shane never did nothing to me, you know. And my only job over here on my channel and doing the two exclusives is to chat to reality TV stars about my favorite shows so that their stories can be told, you know. It would be biased for me to not have invited her over here when I think it's just the ADHD in me. I want to talk to everybody. You know, I don't want to talk to just two. If it's five there, I want to talk to all five or just get me close to it as possible. So, yes. All right. Let me make sure I got everything down. <laughs> I need to get down before we get into the blocking. Dang, Dr. Jackie blocked me like how I got blocked in a circle. <laughs> I just thought about that block. The block just came out of nowhere. I was near the finish line of greatness, and then it just smacked me on the back of my neck. <sighs> Listen, we're going to get into it. You guys stay locked and loaded. I'm going to play a commercial, maybe two. Um, and then once we get back, we're going to get into our recent development. <laughs> Dr. Jackie! Can you leave your boxing gloves at the house, okay? <laughs> Need a daily fix? Get in the mix with Twix, a live digital digest of queer commentary on reality TV and social media. I do have to play devil's advocate just a little bit. I think Nene is above Tiffany Pollard. Really? Let me tell you something, bitch, if you hit me, I'm gonna hit you so hard, you got to go get your man. Live every Monday night, only on the Oliver Twix YouTube channel. Watch and listen as myself and my bestest squirrel and girlfriends get into our favorite guilty pleasures. I know in working with children, we were always taught like children learn behavior through two things, for what's taught and what's allowed. As for me and my house, we would serve the Lord. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> what is like the main key advice that you would give? Get a lawyer. And you just never know who was gonna stop by in the mix. You know what, Sam? We gonna go to you first. Let me say something right now. Just watching the show, my butthole was in the night. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a lot. So buckle the up because I have so many opinions on this. Don't miss a good laugh and some exclusive tea. I have another phone call that I actually have recorded. I think she's still in the back, Dr. G. I'm waiting on her to get back on too. Get in the mix with Twix every Monday night only on the Oliver Twix YouTube channel. See you there. And we are back. Okay, let's get this bad boy up here. Let's share our screen, friends. We're going to walk through this really slow. We're going to walk through this really slow. Really, really, really slow. <laughs> I don't know why when I see that it makes me laugh. 
Because I'm not all of you done did it, bitch, you know? You showing out. Okay, listen, I barely got away with the whole Johnny situation and him coming on my thing talking about Candy. Yes, Don Juan called me, okay? And the people did see it. The only thing that saved me, I ain't gonna say the only thing that saved me, but it was acknowledged that it could, it was clear that I didn't know he was gonna say that and I did not, um, I did not engage it, you know? Also, I was like, okay, shit, if Candy cool, then you know, I think this is back of my head. If Candy cool, if Candy shut the shit down or Candy ain't bothering, then I'm kind of in the clear with everybody. That's what I thought. I thought wrong. Okay, so listen, I was, I saw all of the media attention this was getting. And then I was like, ooh, let me do a quick little inventory to see if anybody done got um, upset with me. So I was like, well, child, let me go check the most immediate one. Let me go check Dr. Heavenly. At the time, Dr. Heavenly was still following me. Okay, let me go check Dr. Jackie. Child! I tried to take <laughs> the Jackie. It went up. I said, no, not Dr. Jackie. Okay, well, maybe, maybe she hid it like she did the last time. You know, she put it behind the curtain and, you know, and then she brought it back out. So I told my friend, those Go on the Jackie thing and see if it'll pop up. It popped up. I said, oh, no, not Dr. Martin Luther Jackie Walters. Then put the chop with the block on my neck. All right, let's walk through this, okay? Why did she block me? Baby, I don't know. I don't know. She didn't tell me. She didn't call me and say, hey, Oliver. I'm blocking you because sin. That didn't happen. There was no signal. And I mean, she honestly don't owe me that, you know? And let's just be real. I'm going to kind of talk free. I got a script down here, but I'm going to talk free. Dr. Jackie is a 60-year-old black multimillionaire woman who's a doctor and owns multiple companies. I'm the head in charge of all the Twix. Young and supple. Young, black, and gifted. Queer excellence over here doing his thing. In what world do me and Jack, me and Dr. Jackie hang out and talk on the phone and chit chat and go to the mall and get our nails done? That just don't, that just don't happen. I just want to get that, you know, out the way, right? Um, so it's not like, you know, I'm not her equal. I'm not her equal at all. So she really don't, she don't owe me shit. She does not owe me shit. And I do not feel in my heart. She owes me an explanation. That is her phone. That are, that's her fingers attached to her. Dr. Jackie 65. How old is Dr. Jackie? Listen, I don't know. Okay. I was told it was 6.0 60. She said 60. That's what, that's what we going with. Okay. I don't know. Okay. And even, even if I did, I wouldn't tell y'all because that's not the type of stuff we do. We let other people tell their business. I ain't going to tell it. Um, cause I just don't want to go to hell. But that's her fingers attached to her knuckles that she went on her phone. And when she saw that shit, she said, block. Ain't none of my body parts fall off. You know, life is still good. Lights are still on. I looked at my account. Ain't nothing go out. Something actually came in today. Praise the Lord. My dog is still good. Life is still great. So, I mean, I'm not trying to sound funny, but I'm not pressed about, you know, a follow. When, you know... Let me slow down before I wreck out. Okay. Okay, let's talk about our background. Me and Dr. Me and Dr. Jackie's background. Um, so I've never actually worked with Dr. Jackie. Because I'll first of all, I don't work for nobody. All right. I don't think none of these, you know, I'm trying to not let the brow kind of come out. I want to be respectful. I really want to be respectful, honestly, because I don't want the message to get lost in me trying to be funny and me being relaxed and not pulled up with y'all. Um but I've never worked for anybody because anybody ever give me a W-2. You know, it's always been a work with, hey, when are, when are you available? How much is it? When can you come? Um, is usually the questionnaire, you know, when she's there. Um, but I've never worked with Dr. Jackie. Now, she's asked me questions. There have been times where um, y'all down in the chat saying she's 65. Y'all, I don't know. I don't know. Okay? Leave me alone about it. Okay? Focus on this. Okay? Y'all in the mix with Twix. All right? So... We've never worked together. Um, I really have a relationship with Dr. Jackie because of Dr. Heavenly. Um, Y'all know for the last three years, I have been with Dr. Heavenly as her content creator, which then segue into me helping her out with her um, overall social media, with branding, with infrastructure, with setup, monetization, um, running ads, 
helping out with captions, helping coming up with content, coming up with marketing strategies, developing commercials, all the commercials you all see with Dr. Haley, the intros, the thumbnails, the pretty ones. Um, no shade. Because you know, you know, you know, the girls be, you know, when they don't want to get in the mix with twigs, they try to get an easy fix and then it don't stick, but it's all right, you know, it's all right. Um, but that that that's the realm that I work with Dr. Heavenly. And by way of that, I've been around Dr. Jackie. Like I told Doc, like I told um Buffy in the interview, I honestly think the world, and I don't think I said this in the interview, I'll say right now, I think the world of Dr. Jackie. Um, in my close circle of friends, I tell them of all the people that I know personally, when I grow up, I want to be like Dr. Jackie for the reasons that I've seen with my own two eyes about Dr. Jackie. I think from my experience, I think Dr. Jackie is kind. I think Dr. Jackie is smart. Um, you know, I'll always say Dr. Jackie will get you. Okay. And it will be like, a, and you will fall out in two seconds. It will get you real quick. You know, she will get you real quick. Like, well, damn, what happened? Why is my scalp coming off? But I think she's a great person. I do think she is an amazing, professional, accomplished, black, educated woman who does a lot for a lot of people and who is honestly a kind-hearted person. And to me, has been very aspirational in seeing her. That is my that is my experience. That's my perspective. Um, and that does not negate any other perspective that anybody has about her, hence why I was, I feel like compassionate enough and understanding enough to allow Buffy to come on and talk her thing because that's what you do as an interviewer. You're not supposed to be biased. If you're telling the story, tell all of it. Just don't cherry pick it. And you know, no Tino Shade, Carlos King, like Mariah said, is friends with all the girls. You know, is Carlos King blocked? <laughs> and I love Carlos King, by the way. Carlos King has always been sweet to me. Actually, has been very sweet to me and very nice and kind to me. Shout out to Carlos King. Is Carlos King block is what I want to know by anybody. And Carlos King sit down with all of them. They go viral, hundreds of tens of thousands of 50 million views all over the internet. He is slapping fives, laughing with the girls talking about each and every single last one of y'all. Um, I saw people down in the comments saying, aren't you, aren't you and Dr. Jackie friends, y'all? And I do want to clarify this up a little bit. I may do another live talking more about this. Maybe, maybe, because I don't want to start no shit. But I know for you guys at home, social media and the people you see on social media, social media that you follow, a lot of the people that I work with, some of you guys um, who bless me with your with your following to my life and what I do. And you guys see us together, you see us laughing, you see us smiling. You know, I know narratives get painted, assumptions get made. And yes, I will say with all of the people that I've worked with, and I'll, I'll try to name them all out of respect. Um... Funky Dineva, T.S. Madison, Dr. Heavenly, Quad, Shekinah, um, Tiny, Spice, Candy, Miss Pat. I hope I'm not missing nobody. I have developed some sort of nice relationship with all of them, you know? But honestly, folks, it's something that I had to realize, and it's something that I want you guys to realize. These relationships are all based in business. Judy, I'm sorry, I forgot about Judy. Judy, all these relationships are based in business. The only one, and this is no shade to any to anybody, honestly, this is not, and I hate to make it like a pedestal type thing. The only one who I can say is my friend, is my family, is someone that I talk to when I'm when we're not working, hell, it's been less working and more so being friends and family and you know just being there hanging out. It's funky Dineva. That's the one, you know. That's my friend. That is my friend. That's my family. That's my brother. That's my mentor. That's my daddy. When he feel like bossing me around and tell me what the fuck to do, that's the one. If I picked up the phone right now and said I need a thousand dollars or I'm in trouble, or bitch, I'm in jail, or this doesn't happen, or I need your help, or whatever, and vice versa as it has happened, that's the one, you know? Um, I understand what you guys see and what you guys would like to be, but 
just being realistic, most of these people that I work with are all 40 plus. Not saying that I can't have a relationship with them, but again, the basis of our relationships are all business. They're calling me up, asking me for my creative ideas and services in exchange for currency. And I say yes or no, you know? And through working, like all of you guys at your places of employment, you do develop relationships and rapports and, and friendships, work friendships and things with people and stuff like that. But, you know, we not, I'm not, <laughs> you know, and again, I'm not trying to be shady, but in all those, with all those people, they work in their own projects, doing their own thing, and they don't ask a bitch, do they like it or not? And not saying that I take it personally, because I do not, because I understand it's business, but there have been times with some of those people, they've worked with other people or have entertained other people, or collaborated with other people who didn't necessarily like me, who either said something about me on the internet or did something behind the scenes that they were knowledgeable about or whatever, whatever, but my client still chose to work with that person. At the end of the day, it's about business. So... Can a little Ollie Pop, little Oliver Twigs over here in the mix do his own thing, you know? Can I run my business? Well, I am going to run my business the way I want to. But y'all know what I'm saying. It's real. What's good for the goose also got to be good for the gander. I'm rambling. Let's keep on going. All right. I talked about how I feel about her. How I feel about it now. Honestly, it's funny. You know, I don't feel no way about it because I first would have to know why she did it, you know? And I don't. It's really no big deal, you know, to me, it's not, you know, I don't know what Dr. Jackie, Dr. Jackie's experience was when all that shit went down. I don't know how she feels about Buffy. I don't know what's triggering for her. I don't know what's, whatever, whatever, you know, if she watched the video, which I doubt she did, like you guys did out there, the people was reading me because they felt like I was taking up for her too much, you know? They felt like me saying what my perspective was in certain lines of questioning that I was giving Buffy was in support of her and not holding her accountable. How can I hold a G Dr. Jack accountable? I ain't Jesus. And I ain't trying to be him. The deal with all y'all and all this shit, host, oh, excuse me, people suing each other. I don't got time for none of that. I don't want to be Jesus. I don't want to hold nobody accountable. I can barely hold my grown young ass accountable. Let the people that in effect hold her accountable. Y'all don't need little old me holding nobody accountable. Okay, I hold Jackie, Dr. Jackie accountable. I'm just a content creator. I ain't no damn lawmaker. Um, I don't know. I don't even know where I was. Oh, how do I feel about it now? Um, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know what her experience is. Her experience is, and I respect it honestly. You know. Um, I did know, oh, I do want to say this before this. Now, now here's what I do think, and I'll be honest, you know, full, fully transparent because I mentioned it in the chat with Buffy and I'll mention it here again. I did tell Buffy just cause, you know, I'm an upfront standing bitch and can't, ain't nobody ever going to read me and be like, oh, you did this. No, in the words of Funky Dineva, I kind of probably follow his principles more than he do, but <laughs> I gotta get off this. Never let a bitch spray you with your own tea. You know, you tell it all and let everybody else catch up. So I was like, well, you know, Buffy, I'm just going to be honest. When I first saw the whole discussion about, you know, your stance on what Dr. Jackie has said about um, Black um, maternity and stuff like that, I did tell somebody, text somebody that you was going to hell for fucking with Dr. Jackie. And as, as I explained it and I explained now, I immediately just saw it as, Buffy was just bothering Dr. Jackie until I did more research. And while I won't put a concrete answer on whether she was bothering her or not, because I'm not inside of Jack, uh, uh, Buffy's body, so I'm not going to speak for somebody and what their intentions are. What I did see was the greater conversation about Black women actually out there being affected by um, people not taking them serious when they're pregnant in this health field. And as someone, as I explained in that interview, that has a best friend who's currently pregnant and who's going through struggles. Yes, we talk about reality TV, but, but if we can also pull out this important topic and educate people, you know, as I've, as I've, you know, um, encouraged some of my clients to mix the, um, the mess with the message, 
Um, while the people are here getting to mess, let's also educate people about this, this, this problem that black women are facing. Because my mom is black, my cousins are black, my best friend is black. You know, and I never knew no shit was going on like that. Like I said, I still don't know. I ain't trying to speak for it. I can try my best to facilitate conversation for it. Um, going back to what I was saying. So maybe that's what it was. Maybe they felt like, well, how can you say she going to hell and then doing an interview with her? But I mean, I told a lady, you know, and shit. Yes, I can still say somebody going to hell. And I was joking. I was really joking. Um, and still talk to them, you know? When I called Dr. Jackie, it was really just to check in on her because I felt bad. It wasn't so much, my intentions wasn't so much to be like, why is she doing this? It was more so like, well, damn. Like, it's it's blogs everywhere. Listen, I got anxiety from y'all blowing this clip up on my on the X and on the Instagram and on the TikTok and down to the YouTube. My phone has been lighting up all day. Grateful for it. But I've been like, well, child, what's going on? Who's somebody getting sued? Who they didn't clap back? Who are they stitching? It's too much. So I can only imagine what. And I'm just going to be real. Dr. Jackie's 60, 60, 65 year old ass is going through with all these people light her ass up on TikTok and on Instagram and down to the BET with the articles and on the news on Google. Are you okay? Is your mental okay? Are you are you okay? Because honestly, I do feel like if it was me on the other end, Dr. Jackie would call me. I do feel that way. Or she would text or she would send Dr. Henley to ask about me. I do feel that way. Um. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at my notes. I say it very clear. I cannot provide an opinion. Yes. Um, listen, I think I've reached the end of everything. Um, I kind of figured what, no, I didn't think was going to happen with Dr. Jackie. I did not. And I'll be very honest. I actually thought, I actually thought in my little brain that if, Dr. Jackie and, you know, Dr. Heavenly and all of them actually did see the video and talk to me about it. I thought they was going to be more impressed with me asking questions that made, or that I won't say made, because I can't make nobody do nothing. Excuse me. Sorry for that. That encouraged Buffy to explain, you know, because like I said in the interview with Buffy, it almost feels like a raw, raw, raw Dungeon Dragon type of thing. And I felt like in the space with me that I was intending to be safe, we can get her to flesh out, okay, she did say she's sorry. Do you not hear that she's sorry? Stuff like that. Like, I could just get clear answers, but that's not what happened. Even though, honestly, going back to what I was saying that brought me into all of this, I knew that this type of stuff was going to happen, you know? Um, and we're going to get out of here. Um, while I am very proud of a lot of things that I have done in media, um, proud of every single last thing, I do understand how I have Possibly, maybe confuse the audience. You know, there is a group of people who know me for being a content creator to the stars. You know me for being the person behind the graphics of all the people I've named, and that's how you know me. There are people in this world who only know me for interviewing reality TV people on my YouTube. That's how they know me. There's only people in this world that know me from chasing Atlanta or being an artist or being on the circle, and they don't know shit else about anything else. And so I understand how how I've navigated myself up, up until this point can cause confusion right now, I understand. And it is something that actively as of 2024, with me honestly being back in a place of ground zero and not ground zero, like I ain't got no job because, you know, shout out to Meta, you know, and other things. We always going to do what we need to do, um, <laughs> always by any means necessary. Um, I am aiming to pull in, and I hate to use this word, but I must so that we understand the brand of Oliver Twix and make things a little bit more concise and intentional. And I, and that honestly begins with me stepping out on my own. You know, while I do not mind still collaborating with brands, like I still do, like with the Meta, um, there's some other collaborations I have coming up with small companies, independent companies, local businesses, local content creators and stuff like that. Like everybody else doing, I got to worry about my own stuff. You know, I really do. And that is the attitude that I honestly do have, you know, um, as a content creator who has been in Atlanta for 10 years, six years, I mean, four years college, six years as a young adult, 
I've been in this business fully since 2019. So 2019, but this year makes five years. This January will make five years that I've like been a full-time content creator. I have sat back and I have seen the people, you know, I just seen some shit, you know. I ain't directing this towards nobody in this specifically. I'm just talking in general as a general little um benediction so we can get up out of here. It's people I don't work with that went back on things that they've said, you know, there's people, there's things that I've created that have, you know, that I've created, you know, when these people, these people, there have been situations, you know, where there's just been situations where whether it is intended or not, people, we are inherent, inherently selfish and, and ultimately while we can honestly have the best interest or intend to do whatever we want for other people, people can look out for themselves at the end of the day. And it is a lesson that I had to learn. And with learning that lesson, as I move forward in my career, I know in order to be successful, I must and always put what I do first. And that doesn't mean, you know, there's no intention of harm or malice. And listen, whether y'all want to believe me or not, as we, move, as we move forward, I'm never, ever doing anything intentionally to harm somebody. And if I think something is going to hurt somebody, I'm going to do my best to move out of the way because I never want what I create to be damaging, uh, which is why I felt it so necessary to come on tonight and talk about what has happened because this has gone to a higher level. And I just wanted to explain my side and what my intentions, what my thought process are for the people who are interested so that y'all can know. Um, it's enough shit going on out there in the world. Bitch, I'm going through shit right now, you know, to God be the glory. We making it, but I'm not trying to jump on the internet and aid into no one's pain, aid into no one's agony, start no shit, do nothing, you know. I understand it's a casualty, you know, reality TV is messy, YouTube is messy, interviews are messy, people personalities, they messy, stuff like this, people, emotions get involved, it's already messy. My intentions are never to hurt nobody or allow anything that I know is going to hurt anybody. It is a hard space trying to interview people in the same realm that you know people, you have relationships with. However, it happens all the time. Carlos King interviews all of them and calls all of them queens and gives them all their flowers and does his thing. He's doing an amazing job. I'll be going up on Twitter for Carlos. I'm like, oh, girl, this is everything. Every time I chat... Bitch, I, I, while I got you here, when I saw Mariah walk through that thing, showing off all her infrastructure and, 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 and landscape and technology and rooms and things like that, I said, that's what Mariah pushed through. You see the first one that came on that platform and pushed the business. Now, the people be seeing Carlos King go viral every week with his YouTube clips and stuff like that. Why isn't Mariah the first one who came on and said, hey, this is what we're doing over here. Come over. Um, <laughs> Funky Dineva. Reads the people down. All our favorite people, the Claudias, the Charlemagne, they all sit in these spaces. The, 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 the what's that baby name? Um, that I was talking about, look like Miss Netta, um, with Club Shanae, what is it? Shay Shay, Shannon Sharp, Shannon Sharp. They be friends with all these people, but they just they doing a job. This is my passion. This is what I love to do. This is what I honestly can get up and do any and every day, as I have done, as I've done before, as I'm doing right now. This is what I love to do. Um, and I'm going to keep on doing it. Hopefully, this cleared up some things for y'all. I have no ill um, feelings with anybody. Because I don't really be giving a fuck. Because why should I care about, you know, why should I care? Shit. But I don't have any um, negative feelings with anybody. As far as I know. As far as I know, if people actually are y'all friends, blah, 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 as far as I know, you, I, I don't think nothing didn't happen. You know, anybody call me and say, we ain't fucking with you no more. Um, and it's not like I'm hanging out with these people going down to the, to the, to the bar where the, uh, where the doctor calls be, okay? <laughs> Looking for season 11 storylines. I ain't hanging out with them like that. I only see them when it's time to exchange services. So, shit, yeah, um... We just going to continue to brush our teeth at night, floss, um, eat greens, work out, journal, 
do the right thing. Repent because the Lord is coming back. And we're going to continue to stream hydraulics, y'all. Um, thank y'all so much to everybody who supported my song. Hydraulics, I charted at number 54 on the hip-hop and R&B charts on iTunes. Thank you guys so much. The first week streams were out of this world. It blew my mind. I'm going to play it on our way out here. But I love you guys so much. Listen, continue to follow me. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when we are going live. Share my content. Please get down in the comments and chat with me. I love engaging the comments, even for, for the ones um, who don't have the same opinions as me because I don't know why it's so hard for people to do this. Shut the shit off and go off and do something else. Um, but please engage with me. Talk to me. I don't buy. I really don't. Um, follow me on all of my other platforms at he is Oliver Twix. That's T-W-I-X-T on everything. Um, and say a lot to know that. Oh, because the head nerd in charge is here. The head nerd in charge is here. He ain't going nowhere. Huh. He ain't going nowhere. I love you guys so much. Until next time, be sure to parade and eagle. Good night. What's going on, y'all? This is the head of the charge here, Oliver Twix, letting you know that my song, Hydraulics, drops everywhere next week, Friday, January the 19th. Scan the code to pre-save now. Come on, y'all. Help me get this bitch on iTunes. <laughs> Let's get it in ride. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hydraulics. Come on.